Portrait Artist of the Year, Season 8, Episode 8. This would have been 2021. This is a recap, so if you want to see the whole program, watch it on Prime Video. Let's get started. And if you would even consider it for one second, leave me a thumbs up and subscribe because that would be very helpful. And now let's look at our contestants. We have a very varied field, which is terrific. And we also have a, a not just a variety of styles, but a variety of ages and mediums. And that's always exciting. Now, I want you all to know that I have a note in front of me that says no so. And what that means is I've noticed in my recaps that I tend to use the word so a lot. And I'm going to tr try to keep the count of that down. So I get a penalty every time I use that word. It's going to be rough. I'm going to try my best. If you ever videotape yourself or hear yourself, you, you're, you're just going to find out all kinds of nuances of things that you say that you have no idea that you do. And over time, you decide they are annoying and you want to stop doing them. So that's my goal. My goal is not to say that word. That's very interesting coloration on this one, isn't it? That's going to be interesting to see what he does in the time today. That's so small, it's very difficult for me to see what it is. It looks like an exquisite drawing, but I can't really tell. Of course, we'll see more from her in a few minutes. And our next one up is also a small gem and a delight. I love this part of the program. It gets us to see how the artists want to show us who they are, show some of their personality and some of their choices and what they can do when they have unlimited time. I think that's really important. I do believe in this episode there might have been maybe two or three artists that were recruited to be on the program. And I know that that does happen, which is fine. I don't have any... Uh, argument with it at all. I think it keeps the um, I think it keeps the program in terms of its consistency very very good. I do think, however, that the judges probably aren't completely blind to the people's work when you're recruited. I think they probably have a good idea of what their portfolio and their abilities are. So I don't know how even a playing field it is when it comes to that. But I think it's a very even playing field on the particular day. I think they're judged for what they do, not on what they don't do. This is Daniel Mays, our first model up. And he is an actor. Yeah, he looks, he looks somewhat familiar to me. And he was very expressive. Very, not, not much of a background to deal with. They're, they're not giving us very complex backgrounds this season for whatever reason, and that's fine with me. Oh, I see from far away. It's more color blocked. That's a nice device. We'll see if anybody uses it or not. Four hours in, the artists turn their easels around. We get our first look of their what they did, and Daniel is going to pick one of these to go home. This one is a hard one for me to judge because they only did a portion of the face. Now, I understand in the time constraints, that's probably all you're able to do. But I don't know how to judge this compared to a whole painting of somebody. I, I just don't know how you do it. And I don't know how you would compare this when it comes to the final commission, which is going to be a 10,000 pound commission in a gallery. So there are two counts against it. Not that it is an exquisite and perfect, but in a gallery setting, that's going to be so tiny and it's incomplete. So I'm not sure how to judge this. And this was the gal who had a self-portrait, which was a small sketch and was very difficult to see when we were first looked at their self-portrait. So I don't know how to judge this person's work. I just realized I said the, the word once. I'm going to try... Uh, not to. I'm going to keep a count here to see how many times I do that. Here's our next one up. Oh, this is a big piece. You only have four hours. Now I know there's a lunch break and you can paint during your lunch break so that gives you another hour, but you are interrupted for interviews and that's a lot of real estate to cover in only four hours. You better have a big brush and a lot of paint to mix. It certainly resembles him in a way. It is a more stylized type of portraiture than maybe I like. And what I mean by stylized tends to be it's using outlines quite a bit. In other words, if you took away all the color and only left the black, it really, the structure of it stands on the outlines, those black outlines, as opposed to 
the structure of the face being made by forms, which just frankly, when it comes to painting, I just prefer. I prefer the building of forms. Of course, there's some building of forms there, but it is based on the anchoring in of the black lines. It's, it's just a style difference, but I like how brave it is. I certainly like the colors and all of that. Oh, here's the next one. This, to me, this is an exciting piece, and I'm not sure why. It, it resembles him in a way. I mean, it definitely resembles him in a way. It's also stylized. There's something about it that feels very vintage to me. Vintage in terms of um, paintings from, say, 1955 through 1970. <laughs> There's something about it that is reminding me of that era. Probably a little bit of Picasso, but that's not the only reference. There's something else about it that feels a little bit cubist or and a little, I, I'm not sure what it is. It's more than anything, I think it's probably the color palette, which I'm not opposed to, but if someone had told me this was painted today, I, I, I would be surprised. I would have thought that this was a painting from maybe 45 years ago. Well, I have to think of how old I am now, more like 60 years ago. Oof. Anyway, Daniel May's pick, and any one of these would be a nice pick, and he picks this one. That's going to look lovely in his home. It's a big piece in your home, but that's, that's, that's okay too. Yeah, it's nice to have a big anchoring piece in a certain place in your home. All right, our next model up is Ian Hillslop. Hills, Hislop. Oh my goodness. And he, he's a British journalist. And I can't think of a more likable looking face than this fella. If he told me he wanted to sell me the Brooklyn Bridge, I would say, here's your money. <laughs> he looks so incredibly trustworthy. Doesn't he look like everybody's grandfather? Any, but he's, uh, the best part about it, of course, is that we have a character face. When we have these perfect actor faces, it's much harder to do, but we have, we have some character going on here and some gravitas. Again, we can see the color blocking from far away, which I think is, is really kind of beautiful. Now, the first painting up, I love this painting. I love this painting. I don't know what the judges are looking for. If you're having a program about Portrait Artist of the Year and this comes up, I don't understand how this doesn't become the winner of this episode, which you probably know from what I've already said that it probably isn't going to be the winner. I actually don't remember, but I don't think it is. And I think it's a really, really strong piece. So I'm hoping maybe, there's my second time I violated the rule. Oh, I remember her self-portrait. Yeah, yeah. She's one of the people that I think was recruited for the program. She's going to be, she's going to be strong. I expect to see her in the finals. And that's just a great portrait. Now, the hard thing is that once we see that portrait, now we have to compare it to this portrait. And this one is just not as strong. You can see all the outline go lining going on, right? Now, in the one that we just saw, there was no outline. There was none. She created forms. And that's the difference. One is sort of a more sophisticated or hyper-seeing as compared to this one. And yet this one is absolutely perfect and beautiful too. So who knows? And who knows which one he's going to pick? But each one of the contestants in this particular heat does nail the likeness, and that is a miracle on its own. I take my hats off to these people. They're willing to go on TV for me so that I can have the enjoyment of watching this. I say thank you so much. Here's a detail from the next one coming up, and we have color value swap outs. You know I love a color value swap out because we all know there was no green on the face. So what this person does is they squint their eyes and they look at what, sh what shade, how light or dark is that particular spot that I'm seeing or shape that I'm seeing. And they insert a color instead of matching it to what you would see in real life. And for me, I think that creates really interesting paintings, whether it's a self-portrait or it's a landscape. Wow, that thing is big. Whoa, holy smokes. I'm, I'm blown away by the size and the ambition of that. 
that's that's impressive work. He looks like he could handle the final commission no problem at all. So, oh, that's the third time I did it. Let's see if we can keep it under five for this recap. Doesn't look as strong in that particular slide. Interesting motif with those little like flowery, fireworky things going on. That might be just a personal signature kind of gesture that he does. Interesting. I can't get the first one out of my mind though. I just think the first one was spot on and, and you just sort of can't improve on that. But it, we'll see which one he picks to take home, which is an honor, but does not have anything to do with the final judging. The judges will decide who wins this particular heat and ultimately who goes on to the semifinals. God, I can't get over how big that is. Ian Hilsop's pick. Let's see which one he picks. Well, it's no surprise to me, but he picks this first one. And I don't know how you could pass this one up because it not only is absolutely beautiful painting, but it captures an expression and also captures somewhat of the life of the person within. It's, it's just what I would want from a self-portrait. Most people who have their portraits done want to have it resemble them. All right, Emma Dabari is our next model up. She is an Irish author. Once again, we have some color blocking going on in the background, which I think really complements her. And we'll see what this next group does. The last group was so strong that I, I don't expect the same consistency of strength as we go forward. There usually is one group that's stronger than another group. But the, easel, uh, the artists turn their easels around. Yeah, the easels don't turn the artists around. And we get to see our first look up. I cannot really comment on this one at all. I talked about color value swap outs, which I love. And so this person inserted green and green shades for where they saw forms that were lighter and darker, but this does not work for me. It looks extremely flat. It doesn't resemble her. I actually find, and let me preface this by saying, Vincent van Gogh's portrait of himself with a green face is one of my favorite paintings in the entire world. I am not opposed to a green color value swap out, but the values have to be correct. Here's one that's much more in terms of matchy matchy, and I don't mean that in a bad way, but this is more the way you would look through your camera and see skin tones. So there aren't color value swap outs going on here. Absolutely has a very, very strong resemblance to her. So that's that's really nicely done. I like a crop like this. Yeah, see how strong that is? Sometimes cropping is your best friend. So she'll be judged on what she did today, not what she didn't do. I mean, she ran, she had to have run out of time. The other thing that we didn't talk about so far today is just about the nerves because you can't tell anybody you're gonna be on this program. You find out about a month before, you have to travel to London, you have to stay in a unfamiliar place. You have to get up the next day, bring all your supplies here. There's going to be strong television lights on, people interrupting you, a crowd behind you. These conditions are just not for most painters. And four hours will disappear as quickly as, well, think about it for a second, right? It's four episodes of a of a show on TV. How many of us have sat and done that and not given it another thought? Now here's another painter who I think was recruited. It's just something I, I feel. And I, I do have a hunch he's been on the program before. Something tells me that, but I haven't deep dived into that. I do think this is gonna be a very strong self-portrait. I just wanted to show the size of it next to him and, and here's a detail and then we'll pull back and get a better look at it. Yeah, that's really nicely done. There are color value swap outs going on here, but it's very, very subtle. There's, yeah, there's, there's greens in there. There's blues in there. Yeah, really nicely done. But do you notice how there's very little outlining on the face? Very little. I, I wouldn't, I, there's not even, the only line I can see is maybe one down at the neck, which would have been a defining foundational piece. So this is beautifully done and has all those lost and found edges. I, I love lost and found edges. It allows your figure to look like she's emerging from the canvas as opposed to being painted somewhere else and, and then pasted down. So let's see which one she picks to take home. I don't know which one she'll pick, but I'll be surprised if it's the green one. 
Oh, she picks this one. Yeah, I would have picked that one too. That is one strong piece of work. I expect to see him in the, in the semifinals of this episode as well. Now, our last model up is... Um, who was our... That was our last model. Wow, that went fast. Judging begins. So the art, all the artists are lined up and we know only three will be chosen to go on to the semifinals of this episode. This has been an exhausting day for them. Who knows how long they've been on their feet with adrenaline going. I, it would just be, I would, I, I would be in a fetal position on the floor begging someone to take me home. <laughs> all right, here's our first semifinals to the day. Great. This is a beautiful piece of work. Lost and Found Edges, really nice color mixing, making those muted tones. But you can see, not diluted with a lot of titanium white. This one, I'm sorry, I think this one nails it. I want it to win, and I don't think it does. And I would like the judges to explain to me why. There's been a couple times they've passed up this kind of portrait, and I don't know why. And then this one, and we've talked about this one, that it leans so much on outline that it's just just not as appealing to me, but that is because uh, it's a matter of taste. It's just a flat out matter of taste. Now we get into the final judging, which is a really fun part of the program because we get to see what the art, we get to see their self portraits next to what they did today. So the self portraits that they had unlimited time and in only four hours what they're able to do today. Uh, this woman for me wins the program I'm going to go deep dive and follow her and see what she's up to today. I'm sure she has an extremely thriving career because she's got all the goods. Uh, very, very intriguing painter, and I would like to know more about her. So that's, that's exciting. The next one up, yeah, another person that I think was recruited. And this is a very strong piece as well. Surprisingly, well... Not a huge difference between what he did when he had a limited time and what he did today, although subtly there is. But consistency of style, which you, you really need to have if you're going to be a professional artist, then you've got to have consistency of style. You can't hit it one day and then another day just completely uh, not succeed. Well, we do in our studios, but we don't show that. <laughs> and that's why this program would be so nerve-wracking. As a portrait painter, I can hit it probably seven out of 10 times, but in order to be a portrait painter, you have to hit it 10 out of 10 times. And this one, and I, I don't think there's a big difference between what they did with their self-portrait and what they did today. It certainly has a resemblance to him, but it's a stylistic choice. So I don't know what the judges are gonna do, but we're about to find out. And the winner is, dun, 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 dun. Well, you already know the winner is not who I wanted it to be, but I am not disappointed. This is a beautiful piece and I'm looking forward to seeing more of his work as well. It's hard to leave that other piece behind but that's that's the program. Remember to keep the whites your paper white, your paints wet, mask for value, mix for color. I think I said the no so word five times so I'm doing better. Okay so remember remember to keep the whites your paper white and your paints wet, mask for value, mix for color. Darn it I said it one more time there. See you next time. Bye-bye.